In a city in Korea, apartment complexes become the most popular type of home and quickly multiply, transforming the area into a huge cement forest. One morning, a massive earthquake hits the city and all these buildings begin to crumble down. At his apartment, an injured Min Sung wakes up and goes to the balcony to discover his complex is the only one left standing in a sea of destruction. Then he goes downstairs to discover the residents discussing what to do and looking at the management guide, but it'll take a while to get the generator running. Min Sung returns to his apartment with some supplies and works with his wife Myung Hua to ration their food. She thinks they should leave for her father's home, but Min Sung points out it's too dangerous out there. As hours pass, survivors from the destroyed building start coming to the only remaining complex looking for a place to stay. In the evening, a mother and her kid knock on Min Sung's apartment, desperate begging for help. She says Min Sung is the only one that opened the door and even offers to pay. Min Sung hesitates to let them in, but when Myung Hua hears them, she immediately offers them a spot to sleep in. The next morning, Min Sung goes to the reception where people are selling some supplies. They don't take money though, they only accept lighters, gas, or water. Another man pays with some batteries, so Min Sung ends up paying with his watch. As he makes his way upstairs, he notices the corridors are getting crowded with outsiders and fights often ensue over supplies. When a peach can accidentally falls and rolls under a couch, Min Sung rushes to retrieve it, only to scare a bunch of roaches into coming out. In the apartment, Myung Hua is teaching the kid how to use a walkie-talkie and when Min Sung comes back, he goes straight to the bedroom. Myung Hua joins him and discovers the peaches, but when she tries to share with the others, Min Sung stops her, saying they've earned the right of a treat for just them. The couple starts enjoying the peaches only to be interrupted by the mother who wants to ask a question. Now they have no choice but to share the peaches with them. As days pass, the weather gets colder and more outsiders keep coming. Min Sung is starting to get annoyed because he thinks these people are abusing the hospitality. Suddenly they hear people fighting and Myung Hua goes to check on a wounded man because she's a nurse. At that moment smoke starts coming out from behind a door and the apartment explodes in flames, causing everyone to back away. However Young Tak comes through with a fire extinguisher and tries to put off the flames. Unfortunately it isn't enough, so instead he rushes to release the emergency hose and gives it to Min Sung, who rushes to fight the flames. He's unable to control the hose though, so Young Tak comes through again and takes it inside to finally put an end to the fire. Afterward, the others thank Young Tak for his heroism, and they agree to a special meeting involving only the building residents. GMA tries to keep things organized, but soon an argument ensues over what to do with the outsiders. Myung Hua says they should try to find a way to live all together, but many people disagree, and GMA points out how many of these people come from fancier buildings and used to look down on them for being middle class, not to mention supplies are running low. Since Min Sung is a public servant, he's asked for advice, and he points out they need to form some sort of organization to work together through the crisis, starting by getting a leader. GMA nominates Young Tak for his heroism, and everyone supports the decision. Next, the group decides to vote if they'll kick out the outsiders or not. They use a system with people going into a room one by one and putting a white or a black stone inside a boot so the votes can be anonymous. Once everyone has voted, they check the stones and confirm most residents want the outsiders gone, but they'll have to make a plan first. Later in the evening, Myung Hua asks Min Sung what color he chose, but dodges the question. At that moment the kid asks her to help him get to the bathroom, so while Myung Hua goes away, Min Sung looks at his injuries and has a flashback of what happened before the earthquake reached his home. He had been downtown in the area that got hit first, and he and other men were trying to push a truck to save a woman stuck inside. However when the destruction began getting closer, everyone ran away, so Min Sung hid inside a car and watched the woman die. His car was pushed around a couple of times too, but thanks to the seatbelt he was able to survive. The next day, Young Tak asks Min Sung to lead the anti-crime task force because he went through military service some time ago. Afterward, Young Tak and GMA gather all the chosen task force leaders, who all have military training. A man says the leaders should be only owners and not renters, but GMA points out there's no bank or money here, they're all equal. They agree to meet at dawn with some weapons, just in case any outsider tries to resist but they clarify they shouldn't kill anyone. Suddenly Du Kun announces his health isn't good enough for this and quits, causing everyone to judge him. Afterward Min Sung gets a metal bar from his wardrobe to use as a weapon, which worries Myung Hua. At dawn, Young Tak checks on his mother before joining the team. GMA makes a big announcement about possible empty spaces to make the outsiders leave the building, and Myung Hua has to say goodbye to the mother and the kid. Once all the outsiders are out of the door, the task force comes out with fences and Young Tak tells the outsiders that they can't live there anymore. Soon everyone is complaining, especially because the temperature will freeze them to death and there are empty apartments in the building. It's then revealed that the district's congressman is in the crowd too and he tries to offer a speech, but Young Tak isn't afraid of his position and kicks him out too. An outsider calls him out for treating the government with disrespect and tells the others to start pushing their way inside. Chaos immediately ensues as the task force tries to block the doors to stop the outsiders from entering, but they push so hard that the glass breaks. The task force falls and a few outsiders attack them, 
but after some struggle, they manage to push them back and more people come down from the apartments to help. Young Tak gets hurt in the process, and once the outsiders are pushed back by using the fences, he yells at them with blood on his face, causing a scary impression. At that moment some residents start throwing rocks from their apartments, and the outsiders run away. Everyone celebrates except from Young Hua, who is disturbed by all this violence. During the following days, the residents work together to rebuild any damage to the building and share all the supplies, they also build a gate around the complex to stop everyone from crossing into their territory. GMA establishes some rules, only residents may live there, it's forbidden to go in and out at will to avoid trouble, no fires should be started, and rations are provided according to one's contribution so nobody will slack off. When it comes to personal hygiene, because of the lack of water, they must put their excrement in bags and throw it into a hole in the ground. A bunch of task forces are also formed for the sake of organization. The anti-crime force is in charge of patrols and maintaining order, and they allow any man older than 16 to join. The rations force distributes the supplies properly, and the maintenance force works on repairs. There's also a medical force that helps with injuries. Everyone is happy to be working together and improving their living space. When the lack of supplies begins to be a problem, Min Sung and a few men leave the complex to go looking for food in the city ruins. The further they go, the more bodies they find on the ground, including the congressman. Suddenly the residents see an explosion in the distance, but thankfully the group manages to come back safely. They've brought back some food, but most of it is moldy. From then on, Min Sung's group leaves every day to check every building on the map. The only time they find a complex standing, they only find bodies inside, and it's all the result of human violence. They do bring some food back sometimes, but it's not much and they're always short on supplies. One night while they're out there, Young Tak and Min Sung chat while watching another explosion in the distance, and Min Sung says he thinks they'll be rewarded for all the suffering they're going through. He also comments that Myung Hua had a miscarriage last year, which explains her need to protect the kid. Meanwhile at the complex, Myung Hua is shocked to see the kid on a neighboring balcony, and he still has the walkie-talkie. She rushes to her place to find her own walkie-talkie and talks to the child, learning that Du Kyun is hiding him and his mother in his apartment. Back to the salvaging team, they find a tunnel that lets them access a new area and find a grocery store. When they try to enter, the owner comes out and aims his weapon at them, telling them to leave. While Young Tak tries to communicate with him, Min Sung approaches the man from behind and hits him, causing him to fire his weapon and shoot one of the force members. The group immediately disarms him and a furious Young Tak beats him up. Afterward the group raids the store, taking the food but also the dogs. On their way out, Min Sung notices two children crying over their dad's body. Nearby, a group of survivors discuss the rumors of a complex paradise, but when they see the team walk by, they get scared and run to hide. Sometime later, the residents throw a special party outside to celebrate the new year, although Myung Hua doesn't think it's a good idea. Suddenly, two residents get scared when they see something approaching in the dark, but it's just a woman called Hye Won. She used to live here with her parents, but she left with her mother after they discovered the father had cheated. Her apartment used to be next to Young Tax, but she doesn't remember him. Since they find proof of her having lived there before, they officially introduce her to the rest of the residents with a warm welcome. Afterward the celebration continues with some karaoke thanks to the generator being connected to the machine for the special occasion. While Young Tak sings, he thinks about the fact Hye Won didn't recognize him and a flashback reveals the truth. His real name was Se Balm and he used to be a taxi driver. Before the earthquake, he broke into the apartment belonging to the real Young Tak, who worked for an organization that scammed people. Se Balm was one of his victims and wanted his money back, but when Young Tak refused to help him, Se Balm attacked him. Young Tak managed to stab him. But Se Balm didn't give up and threw him on the floor to kill him by filling his mouth with the stones while Young Tak's mother watched and had a seizure. At that moment, Se Balm got a call from his wife and daughter, who were yelling at him because the debt collectors had come by to take everything. Then the earthquake happened, and since his wife hated him anyway, Se Balm stayed there and took over the identity of Young Tak. Sometime later when the residents go to pick up their weekly rations, an argument ensues because it's barely enough to live. The anti-crime force gets more food than the others and a man calls it unfair while showing the scar he acquired when he was working on repairs. He also accuses the anti-crime force of being murderers, which is overheard by Myung Hua. GMA ends the argument by telling them that if they don't like it, they should leave. Later in private, Myung Hua asks Min Sung if he killed anyone. Min Sung tells her there was an incident but that the guy didn't die, however Myung Hua is disgusted by such violence and tells him not to go on those searches anymore. Afterward, Myung Hua takes some of her extra supplies to Du Kyun to help the hidden outsiders. Meanwhile Young Tak visits Hye Won with the excuse of bringing her a heater. He also asks her if she knows his mother, and when she says yes, Young Tak corners her against the wall. With a threatening voice, he asks if she remembers him now, so Hye Won lies and says yes for the sake of her safety. Moments later, Hye Won is having a wound checked on by Myung Hua, who asks how things are outside. Hye Won says it's hell out there, but there's a rumor of a group living near the station. 
When other women in the room begin making comments, Hyewon calls them out for their sheltered hope and points out there are hundreds of bodies out there that they're ignoring. The women scold her for being rude and accuse her of taking advantage of their work because she arrived later, they also insult her dad. Hurt, Hyewon stomps out and when Myung Hwa follows her, she tells her that everyone here is crazy because Young Tak isn't a real resident and they treat him well but they don't do the same with her. Their conversation is interrupted when they hear screaming. They've discovered a resident body that was killed by the outsiders when he crossed the gate alone. The killers even left a message with blood saying everyone would pay soon. This reminds Young Tak of having found his daughter's body in the city ruins, and he immediately announces that from now on there will be strict control over who leaves the complex and the number of guards will be increased. Later in the evening, Young Tak goes to Du Q's apartment and looks around, pointing out Du Q has lots of furniture he should be donating for wood. After opening the wardrobe and all the drawers, he lifts the mattress from the bed and finds the mother with the kid hiding in there. Young Tak immediately kicks them out and punishes Du Q for breaking the rules while the residents watch without protesting. Then Young Tak tells Min Sung that his wife was involved too. Afterward in private, Min Sung scolds Myung Hua for almost getting them in trouble. Myung Hua is disgusted by this attitude and tells him that Young Tak isn't a resident, but since she doesn't have proof, Min Sung doesn't believe her. Then he goes after Young Tak and falls to his knees to apologize, so Young Tak tells him to work harder. The next day, the anti-crime force becomes even stricter. They visit every apartment to check for outsiders, and if they find any, they kick them out and mark the door with red paint. Myung Hua tries to secretly bring some medicine to Du Q, but he refuses to take it to avoid trouble. Once the cleansing is done, Young Tak makes the rule breakers apologize multiple times on their knees while announcing now the building only has true residents in it. At that moment they hear yelling and notice Du Q standing on the balcony. After he says this is all wrong, he falls to his death. Later while the residents are burning the body, a small earthquake causes a building nearby to collapse and this breaks a huge tank that finally provides them with water again. While everyone celebrates, Myung Hua approaches Hye Won and asks her for more details about Young Tak. Before she moved away, Hye Won received a package by mistake and took it to her neighbor, who was the real Young Tak. Soon GMA approaches Young Tak to explain they have water now but they're almost out of food, so Young Tak announces a new group is going out to find food. Hye Won and Myung Hua use this chance to make a hole in Hye Won's wall and break into Young Tak's apartment. They look around but find no clues because Young Tak got rid of them, so Hye Won asks the old lady, but she has no idea what's going on. The duo is ready to give up but on their way out, Hye Won notices the washing machine is strangely sealed. They proceed to open it and are disturbed to find the real Young Tak inside. Meanwhile the group travels farther than ever and eventually finds a destroyed food court. The only way in is a very tight tunnel filled with bodies, so Min Sung volunteers to cross it. He's disgusted by the bodies and even thinks he sees a hand move, but he stays strong and reaches the end. After breaking some glass, he's delighted to discover a room full of food. The group immediately works on getting it all out, and when they start making their way back, Min Sung sees a hair clip that he grabs for his wife. Suddenly, flaming pieces of debris start falling around them so they run to hide, but unfortunately a member is hit and dies. Once the debris shower stops, the group returns to the complex with the food and the body. GMA is devastated to see her son dead and slaps Young Tak for not protecting him like he promised. The moment is interrupted by Hye Won, who shows everyone the real Young Tak's ID and makes some men bring out the machine with the body. Everyone starts panicking and demanding an explanation so Young Tak snaps, pointing out that he gave his life for this complex and they wouldn't be here without him. He also mentions that he was scammed so the apartment is technically his. However nobody supports him and GMA yells at him again, inspiring everyone to yell too. The furious crowd begins pushing Young Tak to kick him out, but he manages to pull away and go after Hye Won, who he pushes into the excrement hole. Suddenly Min Sung appears with a weapon in hand but he can't bring himself to shoot, so Young Tak easily takes the weapon from him. At that moment, the gate begins crumbling down, and the outsiders finally break in to get their revenge. Many men stay to fight and Young Tak begins shooting people all over the place, but most residents run away. Myung Hua and Min Sung hide in their apartment, but a person comes in and attacks Min Sung, heavily wounding him. Myung Hua comes in his defense and almost gets killed, but Min Sung recovers and saves his wife by killing the guy. Afterward the couple leaves the apartment and seeing the riot outside, they decide to leave the complex. Suddenly someone throws a bomb at the building and Young Tak kicks it away, but it still explodes above them and kills dozens of people. Young Tak is seriously hurt but still makes his way into this apartment, only to fall and die as soon as he makes it inside. Then a bunch of people enter to steal his things, and soon most people start leaving the complex behind. Back to Myung Hua and Min Sung, they hide in a destroyed apartment for the night as it begins to rain. Min Sung is in pain, but Myung Hua doesn't have the supplies to help him. The following day, they keep walking around ignoring other survivors until night falls again, so they hide in a destroyed church. Before they fall asleep, Min Sung gives Myung Hua the hair clip and says he's glad he married her. The next morning, Myung Hua wakes up to see a beautiful light effect on the windows, but she also discovers Min Sung is dead and cries her heart out. 
Suddenly she's found by a group of survivors that invite her to come with her. Myung Hua is taken to the group near the station that Hye Won mentioned, and she's surprised by how accepting they are. She's given food and a place to stay without hesitation, and outside food is being shared in equal amounts, proving humans can opt for kindness if they want to. Make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you can watch more videos like this. Thanks for watching.